Okay, first of all, we need a roughly a one and a half inch polystyrene craft ball. You're going to need to use a hot glue gun and glue that onto a piece of 20 gauge florist wire. Now I use platinum paste, but it's entirely up to you what flour paste or gum paste you use. Mix your flour paste to the colour that you want. I've just gone for really pastel pink. Take a small portion and make sure it's well kneaded and pliable. Now if you're using platinum paste, take a non-stick rolling pin and roll out your paste until it's translucent, see-free, thin. Now if you're using a different brand of um, gum paste or flour paste, you may not be able to get it quite this thin. So this is going to give you a guide of how thin I roll my flour paste. When I say I roll it thin, I mean it's totally translucent, see-free, thin. Right, let's grab out our foam pedal pad board and our cutters and we're going to select our smallest cutter. Now I started out by cutting out 10 of the smallest of the cutters. Now there's no hard and fast rule, so you know that just gives you a basic guideline of how many I've used. Now grab out your balling tool and with the tool half on the pedal and half on the pedal pad, you're going to soften the edges of each petal. Now if you find it sticks, just dab it onto a bit of corn flour. Just remember when you are softening each petal, that a ranuncular petal is quite, um, quite flat. So when you're balling it, try not to ruffle your petals. Now let's grab out our multi-purpose petal veiner and lightly dust it with corn flour. Now I tend to cheat when I'm veining of the inner petals and I vein four at a time. Now if you do cheat yourself, just make sure that when you put them on your veiner, that the veins and the petals still run in the right direction. Just go through and keep veining until they're all done. Pick up your polystyrene ball and add a very, very, very small amount of sugar glue. You don't want too much glue or your petals are going to start sliding all around the polystyrene ball. Work out where the centre of the ball is and your first few petals you're going to place so they slightly overlap each other in the centre. Keep working your way around overlapping until the centre is completely covered and none of a white polystyrene ball is showing. I don't find the centre placement of the petals um, but you need to be too precise. Some I'll tuck underneath each other but basically just make sure that the centre of your cone is covered. In the same cutter, we're going to cut another seven petals. Just like last time, take a small amount of flour paste, roll it super thin, ball tool them all, and then vein all the petals.
The next step is cupping our petals so they follow the contour of a polystyrene bowl. And this is the reason why I use the soft foam or the eggshell mattress underlay. Uh, it's soft so when you press down onto it you don't actually lose all your veining on your petals. So rolling your ball tool in the centre of a petal or in one motion from the very bottom of the petal to three quarters of the way up, you'll find that you'll give your petal that cup appearance. Use a tiny amount of sugar glue to stick them on. This time though, take note that the petals are just a fraction down further than what the last row were. See if I push it flat, you can see it's just a little lower. But you'll also be able to see by uh, balling the centre of the petals and cupping them, it also lifts the petals just a little bit off um, the polystyrene cone now and gives it a little bit of movement. Keep working your way around the cone. Now I generally tuck the petal I'm working with underneath the previous petal. If you find that you've stuck it under the row before, just use a scribe or a balling tool to pull it out from underneath. Okay, well next we're going to move up a cutter, so we're moving up to the second smallest of a set. I think from memory I cut about 15 of this size petal, but you need enough to do two rows. You need to bowl tool each petal, you need to individually vein each petal, and again put them on your soft piece of foam and cup each petal. Now remember when you glue this row on and the next row, they need to be slightly lower than the previous row of petals. If you need to, give the petal a little bit of a squeeze to keep the movement, um, the cupping in the petal. Now let's pull out our middle size cutter. Okay, for the next two rows, I believe I cut out 16 petals, but I'm quite certain at the end of it, I had two left over. So like always, roll your paste super thin, cut your petals out, bolt all them, individually vein them and cut them. You might notice now that our petals are getting larger that when you bowl tool them to cup them that the edges start to frill. If you do notice this, using your bowl tool half on, half off the petal and flatten that ruffle back out. For the next two rows of petals I've used the wide edge of the dredson tool and just set in a bit on the edge of the petal. I've dragged the, the um, dredson tool over so it just makes the very edge of the petal curl over a bit. 
Using these petals, you're going to make another two rows. Place these petals so they alternate in between the other row and make sure both the next two rows are dropped a little bit lower than the previous row. If you find that your petals are starting to fall open too much and make your flower look too open, just cut the bud back into your fingers and just gently encourage the bud back into a tighter, um, into a tighter formation. Remember when you're cupping it back in to gain the, the bud shape that you don't actually want your outer row of petals pushed down firmly onto your very first petals we put down. So if you find that they're starting to um, close in really tightly onto the centre petals, just use your balling tool and gently coax them away. Don't do this though if your petals are starting to um, harden off. I'm going to stop now and dust the very inner petals, the flat ones, with the green petal dust. One, it's going to give you a better idea of how the, um, the other rows are sitting up a bit from the very first. Also, by doing them now, you can get down under the first looser cup petals that we placed down. And because they're not dry, you're not going to have an increased risk of breakage. Now using the second largest cutter in the set, you're going to cut, you're going to roll your paste bin, you're going to cut 12 petals, you're going to uh, ball tool them, you're going to vein them, you're going to use your soft foam to cup them, exactly the same way as we have done before. Okay, now we're going to use these um, petals and make another two rows. The difference being now that we want to start opening our petals out. So we're going to glue the petals on. But difference being this time, you're going to give your petals a slight pinch, just like this. It's going to help keep your petals open, and it's also going to help retain that cup shape. You also might notice by now that the petal that you are placing may not necessarily um, tuck down underneath the previous petal that you just placed. More importantly, you want to just make sure you keep placing the petal in between the gap of the two petals that were placed in the previous row. Roll out some more flower paste. This time using the largest cutter, we need to cut out six more petals. Using the ball tool, thin all the edges out.
Now this time we want to elongate our top edge of the petals. So using the ball tool, pushing the flower paste from the centre top to the left and then from the centre to the right and broaden the top of our petals. If you find from broadening your petal that you make it distorted and it's not quite symmetrical, don't worry, it's just going to make our flower look a little more natural. Now keep going until you have them all widened, they're all veined and they've all been cupped on your foam. Now this time you'll notice when I'm cupping them, I keep running the ball tool on the edge of the petal. You really want to try and keep as much ruffling out as possible, but get as much cupping in at the same time. Now I'm not going to stick these ones on yet. I'm going to set them aside and let them dry while I'm cutting out the next layer of petals. Now I don't want to allow them to completely dry. I just want them to dry enough that when I stick them on, they will retain their cup shape. Now this time I'm going to use an extra wide rose petal cutter. With the extra wide petal cutter I'm going to do two rows so go ahead and cut between 12 and 14 petals. Once they're all cut out you need to ball tool them, vein them and then cut them on your foam pad. So now you can see the size difference in the petals that we cut previously and set aside the dry and the ones that we've just cut. With a little bit of glue on your brush, now with a smaller of the two petals, start alternating in between the petals that you've previously placed on. Remember that the row you're working on has to be a fraction lower than the previous row. Once you've glued on all of the smaller size petal, go ahead and glue on the two rows of the larger ones.
Now when you're finished making your flower and waiting for it to dry, you can either hang it over a piece of wire, just bend the end of the wire into a hook and hang it, or like I do, I stick the wire into a piece of polystyrene and if I find the petals are drooping down, I just break off bits of paper towel and um, use the paper towel bits to prop the petals up with.